Yes, York, do you have a comment? Well, yeah, at first I couldn't find the slide, okay, but um, I, I love to follow when Tom is reading uh, reading in the book because then it's uh, more understandable to me as English is not my native language, as you all know. And um, I, I really love the part that he that he did today, really examining where is all the controversy between scripture on the one hand and Roman Catholic doctrine on the other hand. Um, so this is really a book that you have to give out uh, outside of a Catholic church. Um, maybe on some cheap DVD, where's the PDF? I don't know. Uh, I mean, if, if, if some Catholics read, read this, uh, some will maybe um, find to the real truth and find to the, to the real God and not Satan that they are worshipping in these buildings uh, made by men and um, stuffed with gold and, 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 and pretty, full, uh, pretty stones and I don't know whatever they have there in these churches. You know, I always get sick when I drive uh, here in Belgium to the next um, to the next little village that there is, and uh, I pass the church there, and I see this big IHS sign in the round window they have there. It always makes me sick to the stomach there. So, I mean, nobody can say that he doesn't know the truth uh, when the truth is presented to him in a way that this book, which um, <laughs> I guess was inspired by God to be written, I mean, this 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 uh, Henry Gretton Guinness, who was a pastor, uh, he was walking with God. The Holy Spirit was in him because otherwise he couldn't have done that. And we are today so blessed that this work is still to be found and that we can still get it, whether it's on the Internet, whether we can buy the book, or whether we receive a nice mail from a brother, Walt, over there in America, who was so kind to send me this book um, which I really love, <laughs> the book and him. So, <laughs> really, uh, no, nobody can say he doesn't know the truth, but he just has to search for it. Uh, problem is that in nowadays uh, people are distracted with so many other things, anything but educating themselves because they think they know it all. That's why they went to school for 10 years or 12 years. Um, People are not seeking the truth anymore, and I think this will only start to change when the lives of many people are being threatened openly. They are being threatened right now, but not so much in the open. So people are not threatened yet. But when they are threatened, this is a discussion I had with my mother this afternoon, not a discussion, but we just chatting. And my mother said, isn't it strange that when something happens to you, whether you have an accident or you have a heart attack or you get a strange disease or whatever, then all the people all of a sudden say, oh my God, why did you do this to me? Oh my God, please help me. Then they all know God, who in every other minute of their life there before, they denied, they blasphemed, they sinned against, and they never knew him. But in the hour of need, they call upon him. And this sickens me. Mm -hmm. But therefore, I really, really liked the points that uh, Tom was reading today. And um, I, I followed in the book when you said it was page 76. I thought Tom said in the beginning it was page 117 in the PDF, but I understood 137, and then I searched and... Uh, didn't find it, so anyway, I found it later. You got a different book? No, 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 no. Uh, I was looking on the PDF first. Okay, you know? okay, okay. Oh, I have the book, and I found it directly on when you said uh, page 76. That's all right. Um, anyway, I, I, I just wanted to make some uh, some other remark, if I may. Sure. Uh, someone in the chat room uh, wrote, we have to put protest back into protestant or protestant means to protest. Um, the problem is that protest is not being against something. The word protest is, 
formed it from two syllables, pro and test. And you have to examine these two words to know what protest, protest is really about. Test is an exam, and pro is being positively. So protest means positively examine. I mean, that's at least my opinion. That's how I understand the word protest. Positively examine, positively examine the scripture. Like Martin Luther and the other reformers said, sola scriptura. Positively examine the Bible on anything that you have questions on. And anything that is taught to you by, anything, by anybody else, turn to the Bible and positively examine what is being taught to you. May I interject? Yeah, may I course. interject? Uh, for, for the English-speaking people who are listening, you may be a little bit confused about the word that Yerk is saying, examine. In English, it's pronounced examine. So we are okay. to positively examine the scriptures. Yeah, that's We're what supposed I mean. to have a positive message. We're yes, supposed not, to not be negative. Pro protest is, is anti, you know, it's, it's, it's against something, you know. But, but, but let people. me let me also interject, not and not to be argumentative, but the scripture says the scripture says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We we must expose the evil and reprove the evil. Show God's people the error of their ways. Now, I understand what you're saying, and I agree with what you're saying, but our mission is twofold, to positively proclaim the Scriptures and to denounce error. That was the basis of the Protestant Reformation. They did two things. They positively testified to the Scriptures and they negatively condemned the Antichrist for what he was and exposed all of his sins, all of his deceits, all of his errors, and condemned him as Antichrist. And that's the business of God's people. So says the Scriptures. Go ahead. I agree. I just wanted, I just wanted to give a positive turn on the word, on the word protest. Because a lot of people are always protesting what they are against. But when you ask them what they are for, they stand there with their mouth open and they don't know any answer. I know what I'm against, but I don't know what I'm for. Right. And Protestantism gives us the chance, on the one hand, to be against the Roman Catholic Church teaching and doctrine, and on the other hand, to be positive uh, to... To the, to the Word of God, which is written in the Bible. That's right. So being for that, and I think this is also an important point, because otherwise you just, you hear you will protest, and you just, okay, against, against, against. And, I mean, being positive uh, to anything else is, is, is more, yeah, it's, it's positive against, than just being against something, being for something, counts also for something, because we have a lot of things to deal in our lives with that we are against. We are probably most of all against paying taxes, certainly when we know that all the crusades that are done right now by, uh, by the Pope uh, is something that we all finance with the taxes that we don't want, and we have uh, a lot of other things that we are against. Sometimes it's about going to work or, or whatever. We don't want that. But we have sometimes to really ask ourselves, what do we really want? And um, since uh, I have found Christ uh, you know, some year ago about, I guess, uh, the only thing that I want is to please my Father in Heaven and, and, and Jesus Christ, my Savior. And one of the ways to please Him is to not be deceived. Yes, yes. It's uh, both definitions are right on target. 
I'd like to comment about something else Yerk said early in his uh, in his uh, comments. He talked about taking this book and copying it to DVDs and handing it out, and I think that is an excellent idea. But he also said that maybe Catholics would read it. Let me tell you something about what my experience tells me. Because of all the bank scandals, because of all the pedophile priest scandals, because of all the horrific history of the Roman Catholic Church, there are many Roman Catholics who are ready to bolt. They're ready to leave the church. And I think at a time when the Protestants, who are Protestant in name only and have joined the ecumenical uh, the ecumenical movement to reunite with the Roman Catholic Church, their face is set like flint. You can't, Walt can tell you from his own experience, they just simply won't listen to the truth. But I believe that while the Protestants are going back to the Roman Catholic Church, Roman Catholics are ready to leave the Roman Catholic Church and may well be ready to join Christ and that this book might just be the tipping point. And that if the Protestants, despite all the truth that is in this book, still set their face like flint and are intent to return to the Roman Catholic Church under his under the Pope's authority, that it would be justice, divine justice, if Roman Catholics came out. And I can't think of a better way to I can't think of a better way to motivate an already motivated Roman Catholic than to give him this book. Look, if you had to sit in public in a coffee shop, being a Roman Catholic and had to sit and listen to whispers uh, of uh, a discussion in an adjoining table about the god-awful Roman Catholic priest pedophilia pandemic all over the world, in the United States, Ireland, South and Central America, Mexico, Canada. Belgium. Unbelievable unbelievable torture of little children in the church-run schools in Canada, Belgium, Germany, Italy, France, Spain, Portugal, all over the world. It's a global priest-pedophile pandemic. And these Roman Catholics are sick and tired of rumors of the Jesuits killing their popes. They're sick and tired of rumors of, of intrigue in the Vatican Bank and the World Bank belonging to the Vatican, and the Federal Reserve Banks of the world, including that of the United States belonging to the Vatican, they see something really, really sinister and sick in their church. And whether they believe that that Jesus cookie is the literal blood, body, soul of divinity, again, a real and true sacrifice for the propitiation of sin or not, they are ready to leave the Roman Catholic Church and when you give them a book like this, it might be just enough. And followed immediately behind this book should be a King James version of the Bible so that they can read the scriptures so that they might be wise unto salvation. So if the Protestants want to go back to Rome, we'll take the Romans. God's blood works just as much to save Roman Catholics as it does to save Protestants. Listen, the Protestant reformers were Roman Catholic monks and priests before they read the truth in the scriptures and came out of that diabolical church and joined themselves to Christ and knew salvation in Jesus. And I can't help but think that God is ready to give us another Protestant Reformation. Roman Catholics leaving the Roman Catholic Church in droves seeking and hungering after the truth so that they might shed the onus of being a Roman Catholic. Who in their right mind would want to be known as a Roman Catholic in this day and age with all the scandals of that church? That's all for me. 
Okay, I still have something else that I wanted to say. Okay, if go I, ahead. If I may. Go you ahead. know, Walt, we, we had a little fellowship before this broadcast here, and there I brought up a little thing that I was really thinking about in the meantime. I said that if in the time of Luther, the world has, would have had television, there wouldn't have been a Protestant Reformation. And that is the problem that we have to fight today. This matrix of entertainment that the Jesuits and the Roman Catholic Church put all over the whole world, that they are not even interested in something like this because it is so far off their so-called interests. And um, this, this all has to do actually with a lack of knowledge. And uh, I put this on my Skype. You probably saw that. Uh, I, I found that some, some days ago in Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law. And this is exactly in the times that we are living, as in the days of Noah, as in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. 